Today is all about a clumsy EOD specialist from Minnesota, one of the earliest second wave of a real American hero members. Today is all about Tripwire. Tormund Skoog was born in Hibbing, Minnesota. His name seems to indicate that he's some combination of Norwegian and Swedish with maybe some Scottish Gaelic thrown in. Tormund is derived from the Norse god Thor and a word meaning mind, combining to form courage of the mind, something that Tripwire would need to perform his skill set safely and bravely. It also makes sense given Minnesota's history with Swedish immigrants. Larry Hama says his name is inspired by Tord Skoog, the father of modern plastic surgery. Tormund comes from a career military family. His father was in the U.S. Navy. In fact, he attended high school while they were stationed at the Seafei Naval Base in Yokosuka, Japan. Tormund found it difficult to adapt to this lifestyle, hard to adjust to changing their home frequently, and was terrible at making friends. He was constantly jittery and clumsy, which made him an easy target for school-aged kids and bullies. Tormund ended up dropping out in order to spend time meditating over the meaning of life at a Zen monastery. That lasted for about two years before he was expelled for his inherent clumsiness. He'd been breaking dishes and knocking over all manner of liquids at the monastery. At that point, just 19 years old now, Tormund enlisted in the United States Army. It was on the grenade range when he had what his foul cards describe as a spiritual awakening. Tripwire tends to freak people out. He's clumsy and jittery, though working with explosives is one of the few things that can balance him out. After basic, he went to Fort Bragg in North Carolina for demolition training and became proficient with both NATO and Warsaw Pact explosives, detonators, blasting caps, and machines, igniters, and it was also there that his skill at concealing tripwires to high explosives earned him the nickname Tripwire. That codename also plays into the clumsiness of his character in a tongue-in-cheek way. One foul card says if Firefly is Cobra's Rembrandt, then Tripwire is the Joe team's Picasso. So after training, Specialist Tripwire became an EOD Specialist, which is an 89 Delta MOS, and Demolitions 89C. Later, he added Tigerfly Co-Pilot to his specialty list during his time with the Tiger Force subteam. Incidentally, the Tiger Force patterns and the name are inspired by NATO Tiger Meats. The Tigerfly is a repainted XH-1 Dragonfly, which itself is based on Bell's AH-1 Super Cobra. The Tiger Meets, founded by the U.S. Air Force and Europe's 79th Tactical Fighter Squadron, now consists of 24 full members, all with Tiger as part of their squadron crest. Unfortunately, the war crimes committed by the real-life Tiger Force LERP unit out of the 101st Airborne Division after Colonel Hackworth left kind of marred the legacy of a Tiger Force ground force in G.I. Joe, as fictional as it is. But let's get back to Tripwire. Tripwire first appeared in Marvel Comics' ARAH comic book series with issue number 16. He shows up on a target range, emerging from the smoke after destroying two his tanks on his own, only to trip over his own minesweeper and almost drop the mine right at the Joe's feet. I suppose that's one way to make an entrance. He then went to Washington, D.C. and was paired with Gung-Ho and Torpedo inside the Treasury Building. Tripwire was tripping over bodies when they found the passed-out Scarface on the floor. Trip disarmed the bomb that Dr. Venom had planted just before Destro burst through the wall, Kool-Aid Man-style, and captured the trio. In turn, Carvel Girl rescued them, and so they jumped on her Wolverine and helped reload her missile tubes to take out some his tanks. When the Wolverine was taken out, he hitched a ride on a Mobat to where Destro shot Hawk. In issue 19, Short Fuse helped Tripwire set up Claymore mines under some ambulances to defend the base from an impending Cobra attack. This is when he famously said, Did you know that weapons used by the police departments violate the rules of the Geneva Convention? Later, when the team was repairing the pit, Tripwire helped clean up the living quarters with CoverGirl and Snowjob, and his gag here was spilling a massive stack of plates. For the op in the Florida Everglades at Zartan's lair, Tripwire was inserted via Dragonfly and, of course, did a faceplant scorpion fall right off the chopper's skids and right into the shallow swamp. He, Torpedo, along with Mutt and Junkyard, ended up capturing Firefly and Wild Weasel and tying them to a tree so they could make their way to Zartan's shack. Later, he did another phase plant and then ended up in a close quarters firefight with Cobra Commander, Destro, Baroness, Zartan, and their two escaped prisoners. But they made it out unscathed and ended up on a Zodiac headed back to the USS Jane Freighter. Tripwire then quickly ended up with Cutter, who was steering the ship like an oceanic Dom Toretto. When they discovered a cabin on the vessel filled with plastic explosives, Tripwire grabbed the detonator and time delay fuse and, with nowhere to run, jumped on it to save his team. Roblox told him to get up, though, that that was no way to be a hero. Roblox grabbed the device and tossed it through a ventilation duct where it exploded safely outside. He said to Tripwire that that action was brave, that it took a lot of heart to do that, but don't do that. Top men paid to train him to be on the team. Top men, Tripwire, remember that. 
A few issues later and Trip was still on the Jane somewhere in the South Atlantic on rough seas when they were attacked and struck portside by a salvo of anti-ship missiles with one missile having made it through the Sea Whiz wall of fire. He and Doc then fixed the phalanx so it could fire on a Rattler lining up for another attack run. And Tripwire was one of the Joes needing to be rescued by the newly acquired USS Flag, their USS Jane replacement ship. In issue 40, Trip was on the Joe's new tactical battle platform in the Gulf of Mexico. Something I've said before reminds me of SBX-1 in the past, even though here it's depicted as stationary. When Fish turned up dead, Tripwire jumped on the whale to go with the team to investigate, and it's Tripwire who's the one who lit a flare to mark the spot where the Sky Strikers bombed, disturbing a fault line, and which in turn gave rise to Cobra Island. For the Ripcord rescue mission to Springfield, Tripwire was on the security team who worked with the strike team to secure the airport, then blocked all the roads in and out of town. Tripwire is the one who disarmed the bombs at a Sierra Gordo terror drone before the Crimson Twins could blow it up. During Cobra Civil War, Trip was on the demo and EOD team, inserting onto Cobra Island via a whale, and then had to blow up the Aspen placements at the end of the runway with satchel charges that Tripwire prepared. In issue 131, Tripwire was blowing the legs off an army of bats with claymores that were assaulting the pit. Another time when Cobra attacked the pit, Ace dumped a payload of Mark 82 pave waves on the bat, so Tripwire went out with his sweeper to make sure the area was clear so Stalker and Tunnel Rat could get safely topside. But then they were almost taken out with Ace's jet wash as he tangled with Wild Weasel in a dogfight that surely had Bitch and Betty screaming about terrain and to pull up. Later, he worked with Tunnel Rat in the electronics lab at the pit to investigate the Crytron nuclear trigger. And then prepping for yet another Cobra attack on the pit, Trip worked with Tunnel Rat and Lightfoot to ensure all the explosives on their vehicles were good to go. In issue 223, Tripwire got orders to defend a nuclear plant during a coordinated attack by the Fred series CGs. He broke into the control room and he was able to talk this Fred down instead of double tapping him. For the Sean Collins Throwdown Rescue Operation, Tripwire was one of the Joes to load onto the second bus bound for Springfield, grabbing a seat right up front in between Recondo and Shortfuse. And on the way, Shortfuse asked about ROE, so Tripwire said, if it's blue and red, shoot it in the head. When Marvel's G.I. Joe team was decommissioned in 1994, the pit mothballed, Tripwire headed to Philadelphia and joined the PPD's bomb squad. He became a local hero in the city until he was called back to active duty when the G.I. Joe team was reinstated and they found a new base at Philadelphia Naval Base. And there they needed to dismantle a nuclear warhead inside a suitcase. In the Frontline series, Tripwire was with the team at Wright Pat. Their mission was to stop hijackers from releasing Dr. Sharifi's Death Angel virus. And Tripwire was there in case they wired the hijacked plane which contained a mobile biolab to explode. The team dropped into the snowy Colorado terrain, made their way to the hangar where the plane was stored, and were subsequently ambushed by Tyler Wingfield and Azure. They were able to shoot their way out with help from a CIA spook, and then Air Titan Tripwire went for the missile bay to stop the countdown timer before the missiles with the virus on board were launched. In 2011, the Baroness was tracking Tripwire, having identified him as a HVT, a high-value target. And by this time, the pit was destroyed and their HQ relocated to a captured Cobra submarine dubbed the Tuna. The team headed to a backup site called Bear Lake in Maine, under a quarter mile of granite and built to withstand a 20 megaton direct thermonuclear strike. It now served as a backup server farm for the Tuna in Fort Baxter, and so with Cobra on the loose, it needed to be secured. The team was dropped with a convoy of Humvees from a Chinook five clicks out from the new base. Trip was on the Baby Bear team, tasked with infiltrating the server well. On the way, Trip found an M29 155mm Davy Crockett, a small nuclear weapon system built in the Cold War that could be mounted on a jeep and launched about two and a half miles away. It's a recoilless smoothbore weapon that can fire a M388 nuclear projectile that carries the Mark 54 warhead. These had been deployed to help defend the Fulda Gap, Guam, Hawaii, Okinawa, and to South Korea to defend against the threat of a North Korean invasion. The idea was to destroy clusters of tanks coming over the DMZ to create a physical barrier, which would then be a wash in radiation. After they were ambushed by Baroness's troops and their stolen rhino, Tripwire lit Roadblock's shoulder fire warhead up and took them out. Though the warhead didn't explode, as they were smart enough not to activate it in close quarters like that, and they did, however, manage to capture the Baroness. Tripwire used a small mirror to peer out the surface from an escape hatch and found all the Cobra Vipers who'd fled gunned down, still smoking. He and Beach stayed topside for cover, eventually meeting up with the rest at the bridge that served as the entrance to the Bear Lake installation. The team made their way to the old abandoned town of Springfield and holed up in the Springfield Savings Bank to re-establish comms with the tuna. That's when a Terminator-like doomsday feel-safe bat attacked. 
Tripp took it down with a 40 Mike Mike HE round from his FN-40 launcher that was affixed to his FN SCAR rifle. It had no effect though. They lowered the bat closer by going into the bank's vault. Now they were trapped, and they were forced to call in a broken arrow, triggering an airstrike from a B-2 bomber right on top of their position. After getting dug out, they provided air support to a convoy transporting Baroness back to Fort Baxter. However, en route, they were ambushed by Crake and his men. And so the Hilo with Trip on board touched down and the team pushed forward to the MRAP that housed Baroness with Trip on point. A few issues later, and Trip and the team were in Nanjiao near the Thai border about to take on an entire army of these bats. Tripwire set up a bridge to collapse when the bats were right on top of it. And then later, Tripwire was in a transport plane laden with Joe's 30,000 feet over Uruguay and bound for Isla Dawson in Chile at the tip of South America to rescue Stalker's team that was trapped in mines underground. They haloed down and immediately pressed forward toward the mines holding Bravo team with Trip commanding their movements, even having Hot Sauce fire an anti-tank rocket at a his tank. Later still, and Tripwire was with the command team in a chart room aboard the USS Flag, plotting how to attack Koko Tower in Tokyo, Japan, where Snake Eyes, whom they believed had turned to Cobra, was holed up. Then he was working with Scarlet, who was piloting a drone gathering intel on a ship identified by the Snake Hunter program as belonging to Cobra. With Torpedo's help, they began VBSS procedures, but when Toehold caught a round in the head, Trip blooped the crap out of the Vipers on the top deck so they could board safely. They then encountered Snake Eyes on board the vessel, but it sank and they were forced to leave. The Action Force version of bomb disposal expert Tripwire was born in Swansea, Wales. In the G.I. Joe Action Force annual, Trip was with Tiger Force in the desert of Saudi Arabia when they got an op board to break from experimental training and move into Jordan where the Crimson Guard were attacking a Jordanian nomad camp. Then voiced by Rob Paulson, Tripwire appeared in quite a few issues of the A Real American Hero animated series. He was later voiced by Big Kish for G.I. Joe Renegades. In the Pyramid of Darkness series, Tripwire made an appearance but really didn't say much. He's not as much of a Butterfingers as he's depicted as in the comics. Same with Revenge of Cobra, he was there but didn't say much, and he showed up in G.I. Joe the movie, but he didn't say much there either. In Captives of Cobra, Tripwire was with the team to investigate the crystals at the outskirts of town. Tripwire accidentally tripped and almost faceplanted right into the crystals. He threw the crystal behind him and it blew up, almost tossing a massive boulder on a town. He said that these were piezoelectric crystals that Cobra was developing, and they were growing. So he helped drive one of the vehicles to transport the crystals away to safety. Then he was on base and Cobra Claws were coming to town, and when Cobra attacked, Tripwire was one of the Joes who were briefly captured. In Flint's vacation, we get to see Tripwire on the USS flag before going to a base where a deranged Flint tried to choke out Tripwire, but it all ended up being okay in the end. And then he was in the commercial in 1983 for the APC vehicle. Tripwire's first action figure was released in 1983, and it came with his minesweeper, a mine detector pack, and three landmines for him to detect, but no rifle. In 1985, Tripwire was part of Hasbro's Listen and Love series, his only all-red version, which came with Merrill Farnsworth's The Cobra's Revenge cassette tape. In 1988, Tripwire joined the Tiger Force subteam, got his stripes, and became the pilot for the Tigerfly, like we said earlier. In the late 80s, Takara issued a Japanese version of Tripwire. Takara's card back featured an image from a catalog instead of the regular card backs. In 2001, Tripwire came in a two-pack with Big Brawler. Tripwire's release India by Fun School gave him an orange chest rig, plate carrier that proudly says Bomb Squad that he wears over his purple suit, which was complete with ruby-lensed eye protection. In 2008, Tripwire was released in another two-pack, this time with Cobra Commander and a comic book. And then Gridiron Studios has a 112 scale mine detection loadout pack that they say is perfect for Tripwire and G.I. Joe Classified series, which has Tripwire in the classified pipeline. So where will he show up next? We'll have to wait and see, which means that's a wrap on this one, my friends. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.